Trump and his and his uh, you know innuendos and his jabs and Biden uh, forgetting what he said 30 seconds later. This is going to be like better than anything you watched on on Netflix in the last couple of years. So that should be really really good. But you know, I get a lot of people ask, well, how's this going to affect the market? I, I Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. So uh, let's get into the technical side of it and then we'll kind of get a little take of what's happening, well, what, what could happen tomorrow. Um, although the bulls, and again, we're, we're going to talk about the, the NASDAQ proxy, the QQQs. Although the bulls uh, didn't reclaim this 277 level, okay, which we talked about last night, that was very, very important to kind of take over. There was a lot of good things that actually did happen today. Um, despite the indexes kind of, you could use the word taking a rest, right? Uh, taking a breather, again, big three-day move. Uh, so today, if they would have regained this 277 level, we could have had a really aggressive rally. Although that did not happen, two things happened that were very, very bullish. Number one, they tried to take down the market several times. They couldn't do it. Um, they tried to take the market down, the QQQs, back to the 274 level for the bears to take control. They couldn't do it. And the most important part is, and this is why I've been saying for years and years and years, that the indexes are kind of irrelevant. Beta names were incredibly strong today. You can go down the line today, uh, NVIDIA, Spotify, um, uh, Facebook was incredibly strong today. Um, there's so many names that were very, very strong. NIO in the electric car space was very, very strong. Tulo was very, very strong. Um, CRM that I've been watching now for two weeks never sold off. That was very, very strong. Beyond was very, very strong. So despite the, the failure to reclaim that 277 level, I think the most important part was that we didn't give anything back. We held not only the rising 10-day uh, moving average, but this rising 20-day moving average. And now if we can get one more day of distribution, we could resume and start taking back that 277 level. So very, very bullish. I, I think what a lot of traders, um, what they ran into today was they started to get cute. I saw that you know, a lot of times today. As soon as they pulled any type of news in the market, and again, uh, COVID is back. Okay, and again, somebody's gonna turn around and say, well, COVID never left, but it's starting to get back on a day-to-day -day basis in the headlines. If you guys remember, for a while, we started getting numb to the headlines on COVID. And then this morning, you started seeing a pretty decent spike in New York City. Uh, later in the afternoon, you saw Angela Merkel talk about Germany having an issue, big spike there. And the latest rounds of sports COVID came from uh, the Tennessee Titans. Uh, they're talking about Eight people, I think it was five players and three personnel, uh, tested positive. They're closing down the facility. Again, whatever happens is going to happen to the schedule to be determined. But the point is COVID is slowly but surely coming back in the cycle. And it got a lot of bulls uh, very, very nervous. And unfortunately, what I saw a lot of traders do today, start to anticipate that COVID is going to be the dominant factor what, what drives this market. And what they found out was the buyers that really defended, especially that 274 level, they came back up and really, really aggressively defended that level to propel it right above the daily supply once again. So these things are all very, very bullish. Uh, the idea that tomorrow and, and tonight, you know, is a classic night of television. Uh, you know, again, I'm not a political guy. Um, I don't have a dog in the fight. Um, for me, I just respect the office of the presidency. For, for me tonight, this is going to be just must-see television. Um, and, and it's not for the content. It's not their, uh, their, their, their banter for their uh, political beliefs. It's just going to be damn funny. OK, if you, you know, between Trump and his and his, uh, you know, innuendos and his jabs and Biden uh, forgetting what he said 30 seconds later, this is going to be like better than anything you watched on on Netflix in the last couple of years. So that should be really, really good. But, you know, again, a lot of people ask, well, how is this going to affect the market? I, I don't think it's going to affect the market as much as you think tomorrow. Uh, you know, depend, I don't think there's going to be anything earth shattering that's going to come out in this initial debate. I think it's more just like must watch television. Uh, so if you are a fan of 
complete nonsense, which I think this is going to be in a good way, right? Uh, this is definitely a must watch. Uh, I think though tomorrow, I think the Bulls really need to kind of hold these levels. Again, we don't need to rally tomorrow, but I think a lot of the names that are starting to play catch up into playing catch up into where the indexes are. I think if those names could wake up and start confirming macro levels, we should have another premium day. And if you look at uh, if you look at the uh, the pivots today were pretty aggressive. Uh, Beyond uh, had that really, really aggressive uh, uh, PR with Walmart, nearly tripling the capacity in Walmart stores. Uh, NVIDIA and NVIDIA went absolutely nuts today. Before Micron came out with earnings, uh, if you look at NVIDIA and you look at the option flow in NVIDIA, they were, they were literally buying those 550 weekly puts like this is the literally the last day you could, you're allowed to buy weekly uh, puts on, excuse me, weekly calls. This is the last day you were allowed to buy weekly calls in the stock. Panic buying uh, in the weekly 550s. Also Tesla. Look at the volume. Uh, look at the volume today in Tesla uh, on those 450 weekly calls as well. Really aggressive as well. Uh, again, we talked about earlier, big speculation money flow uh, coming in NIO uh, on the 22s, on the 23 calls. Very, very aggressive. And if you guys remember, uh, if you guys remember this stock right here, Z, you guys remember yesterday Z, we talked about, I, I really like the, you know, I really like the, the setup here. Big move up, the rest of it continue today. Well, if you look at space, right, if you look at space for tomorrow, it's exactly the same thing. Again, same common denominator, big uh, 22, 23 weekly call bars as well. So the one thing, just kind of a check note, uh, we, we, we defended the 274 level, which is very, very bullish. They tried to take down the market uh, on the COVID news, and they couldn't. Very, very bullish. Speculation money is still there both in the smaller cap market, which is obvious, and in the, in the option money flow out of the money call. So these things are really, really good. Again, anything could happen. This is a fluid situation uh, with COVID, with, you know, with the, the, the election uh, on the horizon. But the, the common denominator is price action. Again, like I said last night in the video, don't anticipate. And again, even though we didn't reclaim macro levels on the queues, there was really a lot of really good pivots. And it really does show that the indexes are kind of irrelevant and it's all about price actions. Let's talk about quickly uh, today's pivots. Uh, really good stuff. Again, uh, a lot of names uh, really woke up. Again, you could turn around and say, well, these were the stay at home plays that got very strong, uh, like the Netflixes of the world. Uh, Facebook was very, very strong. Beyond was very, very strong. Square was very, very strong. So you could continually see the speculation money flow in high beta names that are still very, very valid. And, and that's where market sentiment lies. It's, it, market sentiment is, is irrelevant if the Dow was down 200 points, 130 points. The most important point, point is the NASDAQ held, right? They held. They consolidated, they rested, and now we're looking, hopefully, fingers crossed, for the next leg up. So let's talk about today's pivots. Uh, 492 rejected twice on the daily on Netflix needs to build. Uh, very big move on Netflix. Closed, you know, closed fairly well. Uh, closed within, you know, within a couple of bucks of the high. So here was, you know, here was the 92, right? 492, 492, 492. It traded right to the next supply zone here in this 496 and change. The key is now for Netflix to do a little bit baby steps, reclaim this 97 level, and then you can see the next potential is 507. Again, baby steps. That's all we ask for. But again, the fact that we're seeing such good flow, it really does show that the market is still very, very strong. Uh, CRM, again, uh, I think I, I put the wrong number. It hasn't been rejected twice at 249. It's been rejected like five times. And look at the chart, man. This thing is definitely setting up. A, look how tight this is getting, guys. If this thing could just reclaim supply, this thing's going to go. So I really, really like it. We're still watching this. Uh, Z, again, huge move on Z. Congratulations to all you guys uh, who caught it. 4020 needs to build. Uh, here was Z, right? It took out the 4020. That was this whole channel here. It took out 4020 and went to 42 and a half. Really, really big move on Z. Uh, Square, you know, Square got upgraded again today. Uh, 164.75. Uh, 165 needs to build. Here was Square, right? So Square, you know, we talked about going to the supply here. So it took out the 64.65. 
and traded right to 67.5. Again, top of supply. Again, guys, you don't need to guess where the next supply zone is. It's staring right in your face on any of your chart, chart platforms. So uh, nice move there. Uh, Amazon never got to the 3190, traded the 3188. Uh, Apple, big supply at 16, never traded there. Uh, Facebook is a pretty good move. I caught this pretty pretty quickly off the open. Uh, 259.75, uh, 260 needs to build. Here is Facebook. Again, another perfect example of beta names getting stronger. So it took out this whole channel here and traded right to this 263 and a half level. And as you can see, it stopped perfectly. So if Facebook starts reclaiming that 263 and a half, then it has potential here to 267. And again, baby steps and all the way back to 275. So Facebook was good as well. Uh, Beyond was really good as well. We caught this as well. Uh, Beyond PR with Walmart, uh, 162.50, 163 needs to build. Here was Beyond, right? So here was Beyond. Uh, here's at 162.50, 163. That's the 52 week highs. And the stock traded to 170. Big, big move there uh, as well. So uh, Netflix good, Beyond good. Uh, Facebook take on the way up, Beyond huge. Uh, I said potential 262 went to 263. Uh, square right to 52 week highs. Uh, FSLY I still like. Okay, obviously didn't get there, uh, but I still like it at that round number. Uh, Baba, that, here's the only trade that didn't work for me today. Um, I bought Alibaba. It rallied like 30 cents or so. Um, I couldn't really figure out why it only rallied 30 cents and yada, yada, yada. I wound up losing 47 cents in the trade, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, NKLA, uh, again, a buyer came in. Uh, for the 13, 15, 13 puts, again, somebody's betting this thing's going to go out of business. Uh, 1788, yesterday's low. It traded down to like 1740s. Uh, it looks like, again, you have to be really patient with this thing, but it does look lower. Again, here's space. I still like this thing for tomorrow. It traded to 2098. Uh, I still like this area. Again, big call buyers coming in. It looks like a nice res day today. Uh, new lows there as well. FSLY is still valid. Uh, 34, and again, I, I really want to watch uh, Amazon for the next couple of days because again, we, we saw 3,400 calls coming in for the next uh, for the next week's expiration. Again, Prime Day is October the 13th, so we still have to watch that. Also, uh, GoDaddy had a PR with I think it was Amazon. I think it was Amazon. I can't remember now. Uh, Amazon, but nevertheless, it never got up to 78. Uh, again, when we talked about big, big buyers all over the place on Tesla, NVIDIA, uh, it's going to be curious to see what happens with NVIDIA tomorrow. Uh, MU uh, came out with earnings. Nothing great. Nothing great. They're talking about weakening a little bit of demand. So we want to watch NVIDIA. But again, if NVIDIA does hold rising 60-minute uh, support and starts taking out today's price action, could go a lot higher. Uh, and that's it. So we are, uh, again, I want to definitely give uh, the bulls, uh, the benefit of the doubt for tomorrow. Uh, there's a lot of really good setups here. Uh, and if the market could just rest for just another day, just one more day, or maybe even start going tomorrow, I think we could get some really good value. So guys, uh, enjoy the debate, right? Enjoy the debate tonight. Uh, enjoy uh, start of Major League Baseball. Go Yankees. Uh, and with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care, guys. Have a good night.